Hey everybody, welcome to the theory portion of the website. This is going to be theory from the beginning to the end. And uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of things that I've hinted at in the lessons, but now we can go back and really go deep with them. So this is going to be kind of exciting. I'm trying to teach theory in a very practical way so that you don't have to do too much book work and uh, spend all your time looking at, you know, a piece of paper versus just playing it either on the guitar or if you have a keyboard nearby. I'm going to be doing some examples on the keyboard as well. So let's go ahead and get started right away. We're going to just talk about some basic concepts like what is sound in the first place. I won't spend too much time, but if you think of a wave like a vibration, that's how sound is actually picked up from the ears. We have vibrations happening. So every time you pick a string, it's vibrating at a certain rate. And if it's a slower wave, it's going to be lower. If it's really fast, that's kind of why when you play on a string, it's vibrating at a certain speed, so it sounds like a certain pitch. If you move your finger up the guitar this way, you're literally shortening the string so it's vibrating faster and the pitch gets higher. So if you think about it, if I'm way up here at the highest fret, the string is only this long now, so it's going to vibrate very fast, creating a very high sound. On the other side, if you pick the low fat string, it's going to sound lower because it's vibrating slower. Kind of like if you ever look at a cable, like a long, if you've ever seen one, just like a fence, and you hit the wire and it's vibrating, you can see it moving. Just picture that if you want to. Now, if it's vibrating really huge like this, it's going to be a lot louder. So you've got the amplitude, which is just, think of amp, ampage, where it gets louder or quieter. So little wave, quiet, big wave, loud. Okay. So we have the speed of the wave is going to determine the pitch of it, and then how big or small it is is going to determine the uh, volume of it, which makes sense. And then there's something called the timbre of it, which is the shape of the wave, which creates the actual quality of the sound. So you want to remember that there's that option, uh, that there's that quality as well. So you have those three options when it comes to thinking of like a vibration and how you're actually making sound in the first place. That's going to lead us right to what we're doing on these instruments. So we're playing these pitches and so we're calling them notes, okay? So every time I can, uh, every time I say a note, you could just picture it being a single thing for now like this. Okay, single notes are what I'm playing. We can also put them together in the future to make chords. But right now we're going to really focus on the single note, okay? So all I'm doing on the guitar is I'm choosing a fret on a particular string and I'm just playing it. And whatever it's vibrating at will be called the pitch later, but we'll just consider this a single note for now. So I'm playing a note on the guitar. Which note it is will determine later, okay? So a guitar is a little more cryptic when it comes to knowing the notes on the strings. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is memorize the names of the strings. That's gonna help a lot. For today, we're gonna to be using a lot of the high two strings. So the highest string, the skinniest string is called E. That's the pitch we named it. And then the second string's called B. So let's just stick with those for today just to get started on the guitar. On the keyboard, you can see we have a whole bunch of white keys, some black keys up here. Um, if you really look close, we have two black keys here, three black keys here, two, three, two, three, forever, okay? So that's going to be sort of how we find our way, how we navigate our way around the keyboard for now, if we're going to go that route. So if you take a look at where there's two black keys, and you go just to the left of them, that's going to be our C note. This is just so you guitar players can visualize how far away notes are from each other, because like I said before, the guitar neck can be a little bit cryptic. So if this is C... The musical alphabet actually goes from E to G, but C is a good starting point. You're going to see why later. So I'm just going to go across the white keys and just keep track here. We have C, D, E, see how it's alphabetical, F, G. It only goes to G, then it starts over. A, B, C, and we just did what's called an octave. So we went from this C to this C. Why that's called an octave, you can, you know, it's okay to learn it right now. When you start to measure the vibrations, these are going to be at a certain frequency, okay? So if you jump up all the way to the next letter C, the next pitch, it's just going to be double that frequency and speed. So it's the same note, essentially. Just what's considered an octave higher. Just like if you go down all the way to this C, see how there's two black keys? We're at the very edge of the screen, but there's a C here. These are all C's. 
So the keyboard's really kind of small if you think about it. It just keeps repeating, like cutting and paste all the way across, all right? If you look at the guitar, in order to find C on the guitar, we have to go, in this case, to the second string. Just, this is gonna make it easiest. Let's go to the second string and just play that. That's B. So C is gonna be right next to it, which is gonna be the first fret. Now listen, if I play C here, and I play it on the guitar. Same note, that's how you know you're on the right track. Okay, here's C. If you wanna to go to D, we're gonna to have to go up what's called a whole step. So on guitar, the distances, on guitar and piano, the distances are gonna be a half step, which is one fret, or a whole step, which is two frets. All right, those are the distances we're gonna be talking about today. On the keyboard, half step will be up to the next black key here. That's your half step up. A whole step up would be half step, half step would be here. That's your whole step, C and D. Okay, so on guitar one more time. We have C, D. If you go up another whole step, you have E. If you go up a half step, you have F. Whole step, you have G. Whole step, you have A. Whole step, you have B. Half step, you have C. So I just did from C to C on the guitar. On the piano, we had this. All right. Now you can see there's a lot of black keys we skipped when we did this key. But here's the deal. On the guitar, we skipped frets. So it's the same thing, just laid out in a different way. All right. Now a lot of people are curious, well, what are those in-between frets called? And we're gonna to get to that now, but uh, I just wanted to make sure you knew how similar the guitar and the piano are gonna be when I'm teaching this, all right? So the most important thing to remember now is that we have notes that we're playing. All of these are separate notes. All right, we're calling them certain pitches. And remember, we're using the alphabet. We're using A through G to make the different pitch names. And uh, eventually we're gonna be adding things called sharps and flats, okay? There's something called melody or melodic playing. That's where you play notes one at a time. Whatever you play, just one at a time. Then there's harmonically or harmony. That's where you play two or more notes at the same time. Just like on the piano. All right, they're harmonizing with each other. We're gonna have rhythm, so eventually we're gonna teach you how and when notes are played. So we're gonna have a certain rhythm to something. Let's say if we go. All right, that's just played with a certain type of rhythm. We're gonna be talking about beats, and that's basically like a pulse, you know, when you start clapping your hand to something. That's a beat that you're gonna follow. So the song will follow a beat, which is gonna be played at a certain tempo, which is a speed. So whatever instrument you're playing, you're gonna be following along to a beat. And then we're going to also be talking about bars. So I'll say like 12 bar blues, for example. And that just means little groups of notes. So if you think about it in sheet music, it's just little rooms for the notes to exist in. So these are going to be our bars. It's a good way to keep track of where you are in the music. So what you have to be able to do on the guitar or the piano is start on a certain pitch. And I want you to work your way up. All right. A half step at a time. Remember, half step is just one fret on the guitar each time. I would recommend doing this on every string, but start off, let's do this together on the high E string. Now you're gonna notice something really interesting. Between the pitch E and F, the two pitches, F is going to be found right after the open E. All right, so that's pretty easy. We go right from E to F. On the piano, we have E here. You notice F right next to it there's no black key in between it that's sort of how you know that's where they're tied together e and f they're neighbors g on the other hand is going to be a whole step away from the f so we have g here at the third fret so we have e f g now the question comes what's in between them right okay so let's take a look at that if you're playing f and you move up one fret. Remember, this direction is up on the guitar. Now you have to say this is F sharp. Okay, so it's kind of like if you're really smart in school, you go to the front of the class, you're sharp, you go, you go ahead of everyone. So we have F, F sharp, you move ahead. Then we have G, 
Next to G at the fourth fret, we have G sharp. Next to G sharp, we have A. Because there's no H, it starts over. Okay, in front of A, we have A sharp, then B, then here comes another set of neighbors, C. So B and C, stuck together. Okay, after that, we have C sharp, that's the ninth fret, D, D sharp, and then your octave is E, just like we talked about octaves before. It's just vibrating twice as fast. All right, on this guitar, it's marked by these really cool markings. A lot of guitars have double dots right in this area on the 12th fret. Now you have to know the order of notes starting on any one of the notes. You could start on A just to make it easy because it's like we're so used to the alphabet, but not a big deal today. I just want you to be able to start anywhere and make it. So let's do this on the, on the actual piano now. So if we started here with E, remember I told you earlier how this was C, right? We had the two black keys just to the left of them is always C. So D would be here, E would be here. I just wanted to start on the same note as the guitar. So if we have E, remember F has no half step between them to go to F. So it goes right from E to F. Here's the first black key we encounter now, F sharp. G. G sharp. Now we're on A. A sharp. B. Remember B and C are stuck together? Here's C. C sharp, D, D sharp, and octave E. Same pitch. Okay, now you saw it on both examples, on the guitar and the piano, so no matter what instrument you play, you should be able to relate it to one of these, okay? Hopefully it's, I think on my website, a lot of people will be watching it for guitar purposes, but you never know. Some people just want to learn general music theory, which is great as well. Now I have to mention this as well. There are such things as flats. And there's a flat symbol that you need to know. Looks like a little B, little B. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start at this high E that we stopped at last time. We're gonna go backwards. Now there are gonna be times when you say things as sharps and times when you say things as flats, uh, but I don't want there to be too much confusion, confusion today. So all I want you to do is when we go downward, we're gonna name the flats. It's just an easier way to see it. In the future, it just depends on what key we're in, what situation we're in, whether or not we use sharps or flats, but today we're just gonna use the simple metric. All right, so we are E here. If we go backwards by one fret, we actually have E flat, E flat. Down from there, half steps D. Down from there is D flat. Down from there is C. Down to B. Remember, they're stuck together. Down from there, we have B flat. Half step down is A. Down from there is A flat. Below that is G. Under that is G flat. Down to F. And then to open E. Same with the keyboard. E, E flat, D, D flat, C, and so on as you go down. So really practice going up and down and naming all the sharps and flats. Name sharps when you go up, flats on the way down, just for today, okay?